Hey YouTubers, uh, this is Wartech again. I wanted to show a few examples of uh, some of the points I've been doing lately. Um, I've kind of been interested in doing knives uh, of, of recent, so um, I wanted to uh, just show some examples of uh, the knives that I think make sense, at least to me. Um, <clears throat> you see a lot of knives that are hafted, and you know, if you've, uh, you know, when I think about it, I think you know, that doesn't seem to be a very strong way of actually putting together a knife. It should be just a solid piece of rock that you wrap. And I, uh, I have seen some uh, uh, examples, I think and it's the uh, American Archaeologist magazine, where they show examples of solid stone knives. And you would presumably wrap something like this. This is about a six, oh, six and a half inches long by about two inches wide at the widest point. Um, this is made out of uh, Danish flint. And, it, uh, you know, in my mind, it seems to work pretty well. I mean, it's a little on the short side. It should be a bit longer, but, you know, you're limited by the, the, the stone that you have. Um, another example is uh, one of these tang knives. And a tang knife, I think, is it's kind of interesting because of the way these notches are put in. But um, when people try to half these things, it's, you know, the, tang, the word tang kind of really doesn't... Uh, describe what really what what these notches were for presumably these notches were really meant for a lariat so that you could tie it to your wrist or maybe hang it around your neck and so I kind of like these knives because they're like ulu knives and uh, they seem to hold you know uh, they seem to fit in the hand really well and, and they make a lot of sense to me so these knives um, I think they you know, as far as Native Americans go, I think they were still using these relatively recently. I mean, in terms of time in Mexico. So, I think those knives are actually pretty cool. Another example, I don't even think this is really truly a knife. Um, I saw a picture of this on the front page of, uh, or excuse me, the front title of uh, a Whitaker book on flint napping. And it's a uh, Mayan eccentric. And uh, let's see if I can get a good view of that. Um, you know, I think these things have been described as maybe uh, decorative for staffs or something. So, um, you know, I tried putting this thing together in, in a way that looked similar to the uh, pictures that I've seen. Um, the, the example that Whitaker's book has is actually quite a bit bigger. I think it's eight inches uh, long. And you can see that on lithic. You can see an example or a picture of it in lithic castings. And it's made out of chert. And so this is made out of obsidian. Um, I think it's kind of interesting, but the hole there was kind of an interesting challenge. I've never tried that before, and this is the tool that I used. It's just a punch, and so I would support right under uh, where I was going to push with my finger, basically th like this. Index finger right where I'm pushing, and I would use this punch tool just to punch down, obviously with some leather to protect, uh, protect your finger. Um, this one I think turned out okay, but like I said, it's kind of on the small side. Um, but it is very interesting looking, and I think in a lot of ways it's, it's it, for me the eccentrics are maybe a little too bizarre, and this is kind of satisfying because it's a very simple shape. Um, but what its use was, uh, I couldn't tell you, but it, I think it's kind of fun, this one. Um, here's another example of one of these larger, uh, kind of like a preform that I've made with uh, the Danish flint. Um, it's a new one, and uh, I'm still kind of working on it, but it uh, seems to be turning out. But... Um, you know, no guts, no glory. Here's a bigger example, and this is about six, a little, little bit more than six inches by four inches wide, and yeah, I broke it. Um, I'm not even sure why I broke it. It just, it seemed to snap on uh, what, what I thought was a pretty simple hit. So uh, it's one of those things that it's like you're getting fatigued, and you know you should stop, but you feel like you're in the zone, and you don't. So unfortunately, that one broke. But I wanted to show an example of, you know, in order to get to these, in order to have successes, you do have to have failures. And, and this was pushing it for me with the material. But uh, I took it as far as I could, and I failed. But I think I understand maybe for next time. Now, um, I've made a few more points, but what I ended up doing with them was I gave them away. And I gave them away to the cultural resources, kind of the archaeology department at the Idaho National Laboratory. And so what I got from it... Uh, kind of as a thank you with some nice pictures and so I'm going to try to see if I can show these um, this is to scale this was an obsidian piece that I made and it, this is a kind of a technical drawing for it and so this was nine inches by four inches wide out of obsidian and it was probably good that I gave it to him because you want them perfect and there's a point where it's like you just 
you know, it's kind of like uh, a part of the point protection program. Get the point away from me before I fix it so much that I bust it. And so that's one of the uh, pictures that I got. That was made out of obsidian. And then another drawing here was another example of kind of one of these preforms. Kind of similar to this one right here. As you can see, it's almost the same size. And that was an example of this, uh, this uh, flint from Denmark. And so I gave him one of these. The only thing that's missing is the profile. And uh, it was an intern, actually, I think, that drew, did the drawings. But nevertheless, these I'm really pleased with these. And so I'm going to uh, frame them eventually. But anyway, that's about it. This is what I've been up to. These are the type of points I'm working on. And just something different and interesting, I hope. And if you have any questions, uh, send me a line. Thanks. Bye.